2005, I made a trip up to Nunavut, uh, which really changed my life in terms of starting to paint. I spent three months um, in a little island called Cape Dorset and just absolutely loved the tundra, the, the paysage, everything about it, the people. I walked around every day and I think I got to know every rock in that place and slowly started to paint and um, this body of work really came out of that visit. Yes, yeah, so a lot of these are views of Cape Dorset. Um, this one was called RC Valley and a lot of the carvers lived in this part of the town and I would walk up there a lot. This particular view was from the kitchen of the house that I was staying in. Um, when we arrived in June, the ice was still on the sea, it was just starting to melt a little and the uh, little boats there were frozen into the ice. Um, a year later we went back in, in the summer and we were privileged to take a fishing trip with my friend Christina, who's Finnish, and her husband who's Inuk, Timun. And we went up the Davis Strait uh, to this very low-lying river where the Arctic char spawn. And we spent the day there and as they caught the fish, Christina was filleting them and as she threw the remains down onto the rocks below, different Inuit families would come along and uh, take out the eyes with their ulus, which is a woman's cutting knife, and they would feed them to their children. These boots are called kamiks and uh, they're individually made by the women. And the elder explained to me how in the olden days, because they wore them a lot more then, although some people still do now, they had to make them very, very, very carefully. And their stitching had to be very, very precise because if they didn't sew the boots correctly, their men would go out hunting and if water got into the boots, of course, they would um, suffer dire consequences. So their sewing had to be very, very, very good. And I used to attend sewing classes at the community centre and uh, I was making a little amauti, which is a woman's um, garment that goes over the top that they carry their babies in. And uh, she made me do it four times, the hood of this amauti, because she said, it's not right, you have to get it right. So I had to unpick it four times and then finally I got it right. These are um, paintings of two things that were found. My friend Baji had dug this clump of flora out of the ground and had come into the house with it and I said that's gorgeous I have to paint it so this is nodding saxifrage and nodding campion and all the moss attached to it and uh, two years later I went back and that is still in the house it's dried now but it's still there uh, this is a vertebrae of a whale um, you can find bones on Cape Dorset, we're allowed to pick them up and uh, I, I actually had a huge collection of bones by the time I returned south and uh, I found that intriguing so I painted that. Our next door neighbour, Jimmy, um, he was the manager of the print shop. There's a lot of very fine printers and carvers in Cape Dorset that are very well known. Anyway, he had this amazing collection that I could see from um, the kitchen window as well. Uh, caribou, horns, whale vertebrae, all kinds of bones. And uh, I used to find that just wonderful to go and look at. I think there's uh, also a lobster pot there somewhere. Uh, this cairn um, is high up on a hill and it's actually just beyond RC Valley. Um, the other picture we saw earlier and it marks the entrance to Cape Dorset because the, the Davis Strait comes by Baffin Island and then Cape Dorset is down in the inlet here and it was just a marker so people could see where to bring their boats in because the, the landscape is so much the same it would be difficult to know where to enter. Um, this painting I actually took from a photograph. It shows an Inuk lady with her child and she's wearing what they call um, a summer amauti. And you can see here in the hood there's a little bulge, that's a little baby that's travelling in there. And they were literally right down inside the hood. In the old days, um, instead of diapers, they would put moss here. So if they 
peed, it would go into the moss and they could change it. Um, the baby's very snug in there, it's a, a double hood. And uh, sometimes when they wake up, they'll come up and you'll see their little head behind the mother, just inside the hood there. And a uh, little boy is wearing his parka. Um, this is one I did later, it's of a muskox. I just really find them a very beautiful animal. And uh, I love the way the wind blows through their hair, it sort of sweeps off to the side. Um, Jimmy actually gave me a, a photo of an iceberg one day and he said, this reminds me of muskox. It was kind of tracked by the wind, very beautiful. And they also, uh, they really protect their young. They go in a ring if there's danger and they put their young muskoxes in the middle. So in 2009, um, we had the privilege now to go to Bermuda and uh, work there. This was the first place that we stayed. We stayed in a little apartment in this garden. And I called it Fagundo's Garden because our friend Shirley, that was her name. So this is Philippe's house. And um, so here you can see every bit of roof is used. It has little ripples in it. The water drips down, drips down and goes through a little hole and everything goes down under the house into a system. And, and the chimney pots are built like this, they're, they're kind of unusual. Also in Bermuda they don't allow um, telegraph poles and wires, so when you're travelling in the country it really looks how it must have looked in the 18th century, 17th century, because you don't have all these advertising billboards and wires all over the place. It's very, very pretty. Uh, in 2010 we went back again and we stayed in a little cottage by Evans Bay and um, every morning I'd go out and I would fi find things that were thrown up by the tide. So this is just you know, a piece of wood, a sea urchin, this was some sort of um, stone. And, and then this basket used to sit on our veranda under the table. Uh, the people that rented the cottage were from France and they had a lot of French chickens and roosters that they'd um, bought into Bermuda. But they loved this basket and they'd get on top of it and they'd just scritch with their claws, I guess, to sharpen them. And they really liked the basket and how it wasn't destroyed, I don't know. So one day um, when I was swimming in Evans Bay, I met a, a tourist as I got out of the sea. And she said, uh, I, I heard this morning that there's a really huge octopus um, living just around the bay. And she said, we've been trying to see it, but we haven't been able to see it. They're amazing creatures. They adapt to whatever they're lying on. They camouflage themselves. And they also have a phenomenal short-term memory. This is Palm Peace. Um, when we were on the island in 2009, uh, well, there were a couple of hurricane warnings, but this one was going to hit the island. So we kind of hunkered down. Um, and it wasn't quite as bad as they thought, but it was a pretty big tropical storm. And in the morning I went out and I found all these pieces of palm tree all over the ground. There were just hundreds of them. And uh, I kind of found them quirky with all these things that, that stick out and the little nodes that are on them. Um, because it was going to rain all day because the storm was still passing, I just brought it inside and did that painting. I do have cards of all my paintings. Um, people like to buy those. So if anybody wants to buy any of my art, if you can't afford a big one, you can always have a small one.